So outside of attending the awesome Gateway Truck Race, unfortunately I haven't been able to catch many of the races this season. But the few times I have spent my time with the Truck Series, it's rarely been a two hour snooze fest. Not with the great racing talent and high expectations with the 2020 regular season. The return to Richmond provided as the chopping block, leaving us with 10 drivers, 10 dreams of competing for truck racing's biggest prize. These are their stories. Atop the leaderboard has been the vibrant youth of GMS Racing. Sheldon Creed has had a sophomore surge after being next to irrelevant in his rookie season. Wins at Daytona and Kentucky cemented his skill in the NASCAR Truck Series. And the thing that really makes Creed one of those great drivers is he isn't afraid to get up on that wheel and be aggressive. Just see his win at Gateway a few weeks ago. That boldness really sets him apart from the other 10 playoff drivers. And I really don't see a need to apologize or back down from any of this. Rookie Zane Smith has also been a breakout star. And some even call the California natives rise to stardom a complete surprise. And I'm just going to say this right here. No, it wasn't earth shattering to see Smith go tailgate to tailgate against Kyle Busch. He's instantly excelled at whatever he's been given, no matter if it's been Arca, it's been Xfinity, and now the GMS 21. He was able to get two wins, lead a lot of laps, and finish fourth place in the regular season standings. These are pretty stellar numbers considering he didn't make very many NASCAR starts before his truck series season. If there's any flaw for both Creed and Smith, it's gotta be on the long runs. Both are phenomenal at restarts, but they easily get hounded by the veterans once we get 20, 30 laps into a run. If there's a long run at Martinsville or Phoenix, this could seriously come back to haunt their championship hopes. But regardless, if both can continue to win races, lead laps, I see no reason why they can't be legitimate contenders all the way to the end. Hoisting the 2020 regular season championship was Hattori's Austin Hill. We've seen this season, Scott Zipidelli has gotten some extra speed out of that truck, immensing over 200 laps led and just two finishes outside the top 10. Yet, they only have one win, a part of the first leg of the Kansas doubleheader. Austin Hill came ever so close to winning Atlanta, only to lose the race in rather heartbreaking fashion. But the real thing keeping Austin Hill up at night, not getting him very much sleep, has got to be the haunting boogeyman known as Short Tracks. Finishing 8th place at Richmond isn't going to cut it. With Martinsville and Phoenix coming up, Hattori has to get their short track program into gear. Otherwise, they're bound to hit an immovable roadblock and they are going to lose this championship. Sure, they'll be regular season champions, but they're going to miss out on that one trophy that really matters. Grant Enfinger, meanwhile, carries the torch for Thor Sport, as the organization is vying to win their 5th Drivers' Championship in their quarter century anniversary. His three wins on the year are more than in any of his previous seasons combined. However, when I look at the 98 team, they have been an absolute head case in 2020. Not a lot of laps led outside of their three wins and this team is vastly inconsistent. It's a 180 from last year and it's just crazy to think, considering this was the regular season champion one year ago. I guess at the very least, it won't take much to outperform last season's playoff performance. Considering the success of his teammates, surprisingly the veteran of GMS has yet to win the season and had to point into the 10 driver postseason. Brett Moffitt, in baseball terms, he's hitting the hell out of that ball. He's getting it 300, 400 feet into the field. But then the ball bounces off the wall and he's stuck either with a single or a double. And that isn't the worst thing to happen as Chad Norris, he came into the season as a new crew chief for this team. And he has definitely settled in well, and this 23 team is still up front, they're leading laps, and they are still performing at a high level. As they say, it only takes one win to completely go on a tear. And I feel like once you get a veteran like Brett Moffitt, he breaks through, the 23 should be a deadly contender for this truck title. Ben Rhodes makes a return to the truck playoffs after a disappointing 2019 season. The Kentucky native, he's at a bright campaign. Not only winning Darlington, but putting up career numbers in his 10 to heel F-150. He's well on pace to ellipse top 5s, top 10s, and has cut his average finish down to single digits. Yeah, and everyone thinks this guy is spoon fed and doesn't deserve his ride. But with that, the 5th year driver has a big chance ahead of him to prove those haters wrong. He can finally make that elusive step towards finally competing for championships and just maybe bring home the hardware this season. The defending champion rounds out the Thor Sport Trio. 
Matt Crafton hasn't been as consistent as he was a year ago, and you can argue his hopes aren't as bright as his Ford F-150, but come on, did any of us having him winning the championship in 2019? And if anything, Matt Crafton's in a better position than he was a year ago. He did the very unthinkable and actually won a race for the first time in three years. So with that, it's easy to put Thor Sport as a true heavyweight for this title right alongside GMS. But then again, I think back to the health of this organization. These Thor Sport trucks are ticking time bombs. Just ask Johnny Sauter, in which he'll probably give you a curse-filled rant. In the past year or so, I've seen nothing but faulty equipment and engines really hinder this team winning races and becoming that heavyweight. We saw this last year in the playoffs as they got two of their trucks eliminated in the very first round. If this organization really wants the best chance to win in their anniversary season, they cannot have these issues happen at all. Kyle Busch Motorsports is back in the truck playoffs. Rookie Christian Eckes, he's put together a decent season. He's got a lot of laps led, but surprisingly no wins for the young 19-year-old. Even as his boss is Kyle Busch, believe it or not, that isn't his biggest point of concern. Christian Eckes this season, his average finish is just under 13. With the round of 10 featuring Talladega, giving up critical points in this position will prove costly. And that's the one reason why I'm not buying into the Christian Eckes hype. Unless he can get some wins and really build on the momentum, I really don't see him going very far in these playoffs. Would you look at that, Todd Gowen finally managed to qualify for the playoffs in front row motorsports equipment. Heck, he even appointed his very replacement in the KBM number 4 truck. Considering his current truck roster, I'm sure this is a travesty for Kyle Busch, and it wouldn't surprise me if he cleans house once again this offseason. But nonetheless, the second generation star has had a true 180 in performance. The front row trucks as a whole, they've also exceeded expectations. Outperforming their lines partners in DGR Crosley. And coupling those two pieces, this may sound a bit insane, but I think Gilwin can make a serious run towards at least the round of eight. This team has shown some speed. I saw this firsthand at Gateway, winning stage one. He had a dominant truck before he ended up getting shoved out of the way by Sheldon Creed. Add in Todd Gilwin got a solid top 10 at Vegas back in the spring and got top 10 at both Bristol and Talladega last season. I am very confident that Gilwin can advance by simply getting stage points and keeping up the good consistency they've had all season long. Rounding out the truck playoff bracket is Tyler Ankrum. The sophomore trucker has been the clear-cut fourth wheel at GMS this season. And I honestly wasn't surprised by this revelation, considering Chad Walter hasn't crew chief full-time since the days of Sam Hornish Jr. Much like 2019, you could say this is more of a learning curve and an opportunity for the 26 team to build momentum for the next season. But guess what? I said that last season and Tyler Ankrum sneaked past the first round and made it to the round of six. And I'd say compared to last season, Ankrum's been a bit more consistent as he's riding a wave of four top tens in the past six races. The round of eight isn't unattainable, but in order to make that happen, Ankrum cannot afford a bad race. He's going to need some top tens and maybe top fives in order to really go far. So there you have it, the 10 drivers vying to win the only championship under the NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series name. This is going to be a very tight playoffs, much like the regular season, and there are going to be some great trucks that come up short. So where do I have things stacking up? It's time to get on to the predictions. So first off, we have the round of 10. This is a truly chaotic round as we have some wildcard tracks in Bristol, Las Vegas, and Talladega. So much like last season, I expect some very surprising eliminations from this round. The two drivers I have getting eliminated are Christian Eckes and yes, Grant Enfinger for the second year in a row will be out in the first round. And the reason why is, Enfinger hasn't exactly been good at Las Vegas since he won there two years ago. And then again, we all know the chaos and unpredictability of Talladega, and then you also have to keep in mind the Thor Sport equipment. As for the round of eight, a bit more calm as you have Kansas, Texas, and Martinsville to decide who's going to make the championship for. This is where the bloodbath really begins, as you have five to six trucks that can easily make a run at this championship. And believe it or not, Sheldon Creed, the guy who has the most regular season points, I do not have him making the championship four. The reason why, I see him as the most inconsistent of the bunch. And while GMS is a truck series powerhouse, I feel like they're going to have at least two drivers miss out on the final cut. 
Tyler Ankrum, Todd Gillen, and Ben Rhodes also come up one round short of competing for a championship. That leaves four drivers remaining in the championship four. And as for how that sorts out, I've got Zane Smith winning at Kansas, Matt Crafton winning in the Lone Star State, and Brett Moffat punching his championship ticket at Martinsville. Joining the three winners will be Austin Hill. Yes, I know there's a short track in there and he completely sucks at Martinsville. But then again, I see the regular season champion. He's going to have two good points Bane races at Kansas and Texas. And I think he gets a top 10 just enough in Martinsville to fend off both Rhodes and Creed. I see this championship for making for one epic battle at Phoenix to fight for the championship. However, I would take that with a grain of salt as I will probably end up getting something in this wrong. So anyways, this is NRF signing out, and just remember, life's a beach, and then you drive.